Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today we're gonna do a little bit of a story time, story time. Mm, mm, mm. Okay, so I'm gonna share this story about the first time I heard God speak to me. Hey y'all, let me tell you, it is a crazy story. Okay. Okay. I was a new saint, right? So fresh out the baptism water, you know, um, saved in October of 2018. And one day I'll share my full story about how I got saved. But basically, after I got saved, right, like, you know, you, you brand new, you baby, you know, baby follower of Christ, and you are just like super excited, right? Like I was not experiencing any trials, yet um wasn't really experiencing any temptation yet i'm just like so excited to be following jesus i want to know everything there is to know about god and so <clears throat> everybody was talking about you know hearing from god i was seeing seeing that like everywhere right and so i was like man i want to hear from god i want to hear him when he's speaking to me people would always say and i would read like you know he's speaking to us but a lot of times we just can't hear him because maybe we got distractions or whatever <laughs> And so I have been praying, y'all, praying and praying and praying. Like I'm almost like every day I was like praying for God to speak to me, to help him, to for him to help me hear him when he's speaking to me, for me to know that it's his voice, to make it very clear and plain to me, blah, say, blah, say, right? So now it is December, right? So my birthday's in December. Go December, babies, okay? My birthday's in December and... My friends from college, they really wanted to take a trip um, to North Carolina and get like a cabin. My other friend's birthday is like a couple days after mine. And so she was like, we can celebrate, you know, everybody's birthday, just like a little holiday situation, whatever. So I was like, cool, cool. So, you know, the traditional weekend trip, you know, everybody, a lot of my friends at the time, they were... Um, some of them were like in pharmacy school, so they were studying for finals, but a couple of us, you know, were in the workforce. So we did like a little regular weekend trip. And so we left on a Friday. And so I said, okay, I'm gonna get me a sub. I'm gonna get a dog sitter for my dog that I had at the time. And I was like, I'm gonna go. It's gonna be good, it's gonna be fun. I sent him my, I sent him my little, um, my portion of the money for the cabin and some food. I was ready to go. So let's fast forward to the night before. So it's the night before the trip, right? And I'm packing. I'm like, okay, let me get myself together. And I looked at the weather, right? And so the weather was like, wasn't looking too good. Um, they were saying that it might snow, but you know, I'm like, man, like we live in the South. We're not really going that far. They always say it's gonna snow. They always say it's gonna be bad. Nothing really happened, right? So, okay. We, um, I'm packing, and then the lady who's supposed to be a substitute for me, because I'm a teacher, the lady who was supposed to sub for me, texted me, she was like, oh, I'm so sorry, I can't sub for you, something came up. And so I was like, okay, I'm, you know, thank you for letting me know, I'll find someone else. So I text another person, they were busy, couldn't do it. Then I text somebody else, and she was like, okay, I got you, I can sub for you. I was like, great, thank you. And then within like the next hour, um, my friend that was supposed to watch my dog, she she said she couldn't. Uh, something came up. And so I was like, dang, okay, I gotta find somebody to watch, you know, I gotta find somebody to watch Zoe, okay? So I'm like, texting people, trying to think of different people. And so <clears throat> I hit up my other friend and then they're like, yeah, I can do it. Then they're like, oh wait, no, 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 I can't. I can't do it this weekend. I was like, dang, okay. And so then I hit my homeboy up and he was like, yeah, I got you. You just bring her over here. Um, Just bring her over here in the morning. I was like, okay, bet, cool. So I don't know what was going on with that. My substitutes had dropped out and both of my dog sitters. And so I, I found somebody to cover them. I just thought, I was like, that's so weird. Um, so I'm packing my bag, right? And I just keep hearing this subtle, like, no. Um, this subtle, like, no. And then I also heard, don't go. And so I was like, I was like, that's weird. I was like, why do I keep feeling like something's telling me, you know, no, or don't go. I was like, that's so strange, right? And so I am, at this time, like, 
once again, I had been praying, right, to hear God's voice. And I was like, huh, that's so weird. And me, I was like, I just, I thought about it, but I didn't put that much thought into it. Um, and so I just kept packing. So I'm packing my bags. And so it's the next morning. I drop my dog off. Um, I get up. And after I drop her off, I drive to Knoxville, which is where all, a lot of my, my friends were at the time. They were still in Knoxville. So I drive in Knoxville, park in their spot, and I hop in a car with them. And we drive on to Waynesville, North Carolina. It was a short drive, maybe two, three hours, I think. Um, what I just remember it wasn't a long drive. And so I was kind of, we were kind of joking around, like, look at the weather. And it was saying something like, big snowstorm is supposed to hit the area where we were going. A lot of predicted snow, blase, blase. And so we just kind of like, it'll be like, but by this point, we were already in the way. It was like, oh, it'll be fine, blah, blah, blah. And so we get there Friday night. We check in. It's a really cool cabin. Um, we cook us some food. We having a good time. We're dancing, playing music. We, you know, doing a little karaoke, playing games. We're having a good time, right? And so. We go to sleep Friday night, and the next morning we get up. We're just, you know, hanging out around the cabin, catching up. Some of my friends that were in pharmacy school, they had, like, I guess finals coming up or maybe midterms, whatever. Well, I guess it was December, so I guess that would be finals. Anyway, they were studying for some big tests, um, and they had a couple of them. And so some of them were studying, me and, some, you know, some people were paying cards. It was about... It was a couple of us, less than 10, but more than five. And so we're just, we're having a good time. And so now it's Saturday, right? We kicking it, do the same thing. We had some leftover food we had made from the night before. Um, we we just keep keen, having a good old time, right? So let's fast forward to Saturday night. So we, we singing karaoke, right? We got the little cute little strobe light in the cabin going on. We singing karaoke, having a good old time, right? And so we look outside and we see that it's snowing. So we're just doing a little little drizzle, you know, a couple of little flurries. It's just a little snowing. So we look out on the, on the patio and we like, oh man, like it's snowing, y'all. Can you believe this? Da, da, da. You know, back when Snapchat was still a thing, we, you know, they posted about it on our Snapchat. We couldn't believe it, right? And so we just kind of keep going on about our business. We are not about it, right? Um, and so. <laughs> We are, we continue to sing karaoke and then all of a sudden, power goes out. And so we thinking, okay, like the power gonna click back on in a minute. Hour goes by, no power. And this was at maybe nine or 10 when the power went out. And so we just kind of went on to sleep after a little while. So we was using the flashlights on our phone. Um, luckily, he had a gas fireplace. Um, because like I said, it was December, we're up in like the mountains in a cabin. So luckily the guy who owned the place had a gas fireplace and a gas stove. And so we decided to just go to sleep. And so it was a very cold night. Let me just tell you, I was, I was wrapped up. I was cold. Okay. So I'm in the bed. I'm asleep. We wake up the next morning. It's Sunday. Oh, time to check out at noon, right? Y'all, when we looked outside, when I tell you it was, like, I mean, four, at least like maybe four feet of snow. Like it was a lot of snow. And so we're up in the mountains. And what's really interesting is so like we, I mean, you, if you've been like to Gatlinburg in Tennessee, you know that it like, it's real windy and curvy. And so we're in Waynesville, which is pretty similar. We didn't go far up the mountain, but we were up there. You know, we were situated around a lot of cabins. Um, and so, so we had kind of prepped the night prior, right? Because um, we knew we were going to check out. So we threw away all of our food. We had made like this giant like spaghetti, cheesy, like pasta bake thing. We had some other food. Um, and we had just brought like a small case of water because we knew we were going to be staying for the weekend. It wasn't that many of us. And so the, the men are outside trying to get the cars out the driveway. Now, what's interesting is, right, so we went up this hill, but the way that the cabin sat, it was like off kind of like the side of the mountain. And so his driveway was like a hill, like a kind of like a little inclined hill. And so they, the, when we came in, we just took two, two cars. So we had took like a big infinity 
and then we had took like um, a Honda, like a regular Honda sedan. And so they had bagged in on the way in. And so they were out there trying to use anything, a broom, using their hands. My guy who owns the cabin, he don't have a shovel. I mean, he had nothing. Nothing for like, no, nothing for like a situation like what we were in, right? And so eventually the men are outside and then we try to go outside and join them. We're looking at the weather. I mean, we, we still don't have power. We've gone at this point, hours out power. We're still trying to use the gas fireplace to, you know, heat us up. And <laughs> it's funny because when I look back, I'm like, that was a really crazy situation. But I was not really phased. Um, I was like, it'll be fine. We'll get out. I wasn't really worried. Um, and so by now, let's just say it is, it's like midday. And so now everybody out there, we trying to, you know, and they steady, like trying to put the truck in drive and like gas it. You know, you got to really like hit that jump hard to get it out of the driveway. We can't get the truck out the driveway. So at this point, some of us, some of us went around to like the other homes to see if they had power to see, you know, what we should do about this. So some of them walked around. I didn't. I went to one house, but the the neighbors, they were like, well, this is a private, like, community. And so, you know, typically, like, they're not going to come plow. They're not going to come plow the street until a couple of days after it's passed and they've done the main roads. And no, none of them really had power. I mean, they all live. The, the neighbors, like, live there. Like, this is, like, their regular schmegler house. And they just live in the cabin. And they're a lot of old, like, old people, honestly. And so... One lady, like, she gave us some food, um, and she was, one of them, I remember, because she was like, I don't know why the owner, she's like, he's a new owner, she's like, I, I don't know why he didn't tell y'all to park at the bottom of the hill, you know, where a situation like this, or when, because he's like, we saw the weather, and we knew that it was probably going to be bad, I'm like, sis, why you ain't come and tell us, because, you know, we were just there for the, for the weekend, and so we're practically trapped on this on top of this mountain or yeah we practically trapped on top of the mountain because it was like even if we got the cars out of the driveway like it is it was a real couple sharp turns on the way down and i mean you go off the side you <clears throat> slide off the uh the side of it i mean you just you just gone and so well, that's all we were asking about a snow plow and so my friends one of some of the guys had heard of this little they heard the small little snow plow around so they kind of walked around some more and down the mountain a little bit and they found this guy he took him to the gas station and that's where we got like some canned goods or what was left we got some water and luckily like i said earlier the stove was gas and so we were able to still like eat so really we were trapped um and by this point um, I had hit my homegirl up because it was Sunday, right? And so I had told her what was going on that I was like stuck in Waynesville, North Carolina. It's a really bad snowstorm. We didn't have power. We had limited resources. Um, and so she was at church and she was, they were getting ready to kind of worship and pray. It was a group of them before service got started. And she kind of explained my situation. And so they were praying for us. And she said that one of the members had said, and I'm paraphrasing, it was something along the lines of just kind of like the word that they heard from God was just kind of peace be still and that you'll know, you know, if you don't feel peace about the situation or about decisions, then like, you know, that like, it's not a, like that it's not from God and that like, just, she was like, just kind of like hold still pretty much. Um, and so... What was really interesting about that, right? She had told me that maybe midday. And so like later on that day, the guys with a snow plow, it was a, it was a, it was a smaller snow plow. Um, it wasn't like the big trucks that we see, you know, on the main roads, wherever you are, when you, when it snows, it was kind of a smaller one. And so he was like, well, you know, if y'all pay me this much, I can pull you out of drive. I can pull you out. And so a lot of us were not really feeling comfortable. It was like maybe two or three of us that were like, okay, like, like let's do it. But most of us were kind of like really feeling uneasy about it, myself included, right? Because it's like, okay, you pull us out of this driveway, but it's like, how are we going to get down this hill? 
I mean, it's very icy and sludgy. You know, the sun's getting ready to go down soon. We were just very, uh, very nervous about it. And then it was like, well, what is the rest of the roads, the highways look like? And so looking back, I'm like, that was probably God knowing that that option was going to come up later. And who knows what would have happened? You know, I we decided not to go that route because a lot of us just didn't feel comfortable um, but who knows what would have happened if we would have just said, you know what, let's just try it. I mean, we could be off the side of the mountain. Who knows? Um, or, or in a work situation, maybe we would have messed up one of the cars. Like we, I mean, we just, we don't know. And so we decided not to go that route. And so we just kind of pretty much settled in for the night. Um, and as before power went, or kind of as power was going down, I mean, um, as the sun was going down, they started to like, we had to figure out we are going to eat for dinner, right? So let's just say it was a group of eight of us. And so we didn't have much food. We didn't really have a lot of water. We had to figure out how we were going to, we basically was rationing food. I'm just being 100%. We was rationing the food, okay? Um, because it was a lot of us. And <laughs> you know. And it was a group of black people, you know, when we get hungry, we hungry, okay? And so <laughs> we rationed the food and when that night, I think we had like a bag of like frozen like shrimp croquettes that we were gonna have for brunch on Saturday when we decided not to cook. We had some rice and it was something else we ate that I can't remember. And like, we just went to like, and we just sat in the living room by that little fireplace all trying to like stay warm, y'all. And we played cards and just talked about how crazy the situation was. Um, and we was hoping and praying that we was going to be able to get out um, on, my, on the next day. So this point is Sunday night. And you know, what's so funny is, um, right? Like we didn't, we didn't have any power. So we had no way to charge our phones. So what we did, we all went, we all took turns in a car, <laughs> in the cars in the driveway, charging our phones. I'm like, thank goodness we had enough gas. And we just sitting out there and we would charge our phones up to a decent amount. So like, that's how we were able to stay in contact with friends um, and family. A lot of us was hesitant to call our families because we all knew what they were going to say. I'm like, I told you not to go up there. Y'all saw the weather. Like, why would you still continue to go up there? Which is pretty much what my parents said. Like, you saw the weather. Why would you, <laughs> why did you still decide to go? Um... And we using flashlights on our phones to go to the bathroom. I mean, it was, it was a hot mess. So it's Monday and we're, it's Monday morning. And so my friend, one of my really, really good friends, she was like, listen, we got to get up out of here. Everybody pack y'all stuff. We getting up out of here today. It's got to happen. You know, by this point, I had to email my boss the night prior. I was like, I am trapped. In Waynesville, North Carolina. I don't know when I'll be back at work. Like, hopefully Tuesday, but I don't know. Like, I'm, I'm, we're, I'm trapped. I'm trapped in North Carolina in the snowstorm. And of course, my boss is like, "Oh my God! Like, I hope you're, you know, you're okay." I was like, "We have limited resource, limited water." I probably sounded real dramatic. Those who know me know I'm dramatic. Just don't call me dramatic. Only I can call myself dramatic. But those who know me know that I'm very dramatic. Um, and I probably sounded real dramatic in my email, but I was really fine. Um, and what's crazy is like that Sunday night, like I was like, I was not stressed. And, um, for those of you who don't know me or don't follow me on social media, I talk about this quite a bit on my social media, just my struggles in the past and depression and anxiety. Like I struggled a lot with anxiety, especially in undergrad, um, and kind of following the year following when I got out of undergrad, really, I struggled with anxiety just from college until I found Jesus, um, and so I was like really amazed at that whole time. Like I was pretty calm. I was like, it's going to be okay. Like we'll get out. I'm not really worried. Like I was not stressed. I wasn't anxious. I was having, I mean, I still had a good time made. I mean, countless memories with my friends that weekend because I mean, it, we bonded over the fact that we're stuck in this house. I mean, it was a crazy situation. Um, but I really was not too wound up or anxious. I was like, it's going to be fine. I was like, we have a little bit of food. We got water, you know, we can still charge our phones. We got this heat from this fireplace and it was December. So luckily we had packed warm clothes anyway, you know? Um, and so anyways, I'm getting ahead of myself. It's Monday morning. Wake up my, we wake up and when I told y'all my friend, my homegirl, she's like, listen, we got to get up out of here. Um, and so she, and she's another person that was in the workforce. So she's kind of anxious. Like, I got to get back to work. 
Um, the friends, my friends who were in pharmacy school at the time, they were like, we got finals, we gotta take our tests. And so they were had to email their professors. The professor was like, I don't believe you, like send me a picture of you. And they had to send them, the girl, they had to, she, they had to send pictures of themselves like in the, like surrounded by the snow. Anyways. And so she's trying to figure, once again, we're still, they're still trying to get the cars out of the driveway. We're trying to like clean up and stuff. And we got our bags packed. And so she was just like, we got to get out of here. So she's calling people. She's like, there's got to be a way, you know, but you know, anything. Can somebody's car insurance, like, do they have like a tow truck or can they get a snow plow up here to get the cars out of the driveway? Because really it was like the snow was starting to kind of melt um but we still we just couldn't get the cars out of the driveway because it was on like an incline and we had bagged in there was just no way we get those cars out of the driveway and furthermore we looked at the weather so it's monday we look at the weather and it's supposed to rain and the temperature was supposed to drop so it was probably like in the 30s maybe low 40s um and of course it was dropping to freezing at night but now it's supposed to rain. Okay, so once that rain hit and the temperature's dropping, this stuff, the snow won't turn to ice. We really can't drive on that. So, especially down no mountain. And so we were like, we gotta go today or else we're gonna be stuck here for the next couple of, next, the rest of the week. The owner of the, of the cabin, he had, y'all, when I say, I mean, he had nothing that could assist. He was like, I'm so sorry this is happening. Yeah, y'all can stay another night for free. Sir, where are we going to go? Of course, I mean, yeah, that's the least you could do. You ain't got no shovel. You got no backup generator. Anyway, so the owner was not of much assistance. Um, he was not much. We stayed, in, we stayed in pretty good contact with him because we were just like, we're trying to do what we can, but like we're trapped and, you know, in a snowstorm. Um, and so he was, you know, a, a sweet guy that was just like not really from the area. I don't, I think he maybe, I don't know where he was from, but he wasn't from Waynesville. So we're calling around. Insurance was like, yeah, we can maybe get a truck up there. My homegirl um, was explaining to someone that she works with what was going on. And she was like, oh, my brother's in that area. He has a snowplow truck or he has a truck that can come get y'all. And so. Me and my, me, her, and somebody, me, her, and one of my other friends, we, we went and met him, right? And so we walked down the mountain to meet him. And he took us, and it was, I mean, the roads, it was bad. Because, you know, like, before you get up on the mountain, you got to drive through, like, the woods. And so a lot of those roads, I mean, some trees had fallen. It was just, it was a lot just to even get out to, like, the main road. Um, and so we finally get out to the main road. And at this point, we're like, we'll rent a car. We got to get home. Like, we'll just rent a car and then somebody can come back later and get the other cars. And so we went into, he drove us like a budget down the street. Y'all, no SUVs. They only had like cars. We looked out, we got one minivan. They had one minivan left. And so we rented, we, we rented the car and got that situated. And so the other guy, his mom lives in Knoxville. So she, you know, she's like, I'm coming to get y'all. Don't hold on. I'm coming to get y'all. And so she drove from Knoxville. We drive the minivan back. We leave it at the bottom. We walk back up the hill, start getting our stuff together. And we literally walked down the hill with all of our stuff. Now, if I can figure out how to insert picture and video, I will put the clips in at the end so y'all can see. But that was the crazy, like it was so cold and we're walking with our luggage like down this hill and snow that's like coming up to like our calves. It was crazy, crazy. Um, and so by the time I get down, I, I, I was like, my feet are frozen. Like my feet were so cold. Y'all know, I mean, I'm not really the, I mean, I'm definitely not the, the camping type, but I mean, walking in the snow, like I had on Ugg boots. Let's just be real. I had on Ugg boots and socks. My feet were, I mean, I couldn't feel my toes by the time we got to the van. I'm just going to say that. I couldn't feel my toes. 
And so we drive, we get in the van, my friend's mom comes and picks up the rest of which worked out perfect because we only had, we were only able to rent a minivan. Like I said, I think it was like seven or eight of us. And so there was no way we could fit all of us in our luggage um, in one minivan. Um, besides the fact that like, that's just not safe and we're having to drive long distance. So she came and got the rest of them. A couple of them hopped in the car with her. Thankfully she had snacks and water. I mean, we were thirsty, we were hungry. We drive back to Knoxville and luckily on our way out, the traffic was pretty, pretty decent. We got back at a decent time. I hopped in the car that night. We got back at like seven or 8 PM to Knoxville and I drove back on to Nashville and I was like, whoo, Jesus. And, um, they ended up driving back up a couple days later or like the end of the week to get their cars. Um, but y'all, I mean, that was just the craziest experience. And I was like, Lord, when I finally got back home and I could like spend some time with God and pray, I was like, Lord, okay, like that was you. I know that was your voice when you were telling me the night before not to go. Um, and I was like, I will be obedient from now on. I know what your voice sounds like. And it's crazy because God is speaking to us a lot. And a lot of times, um... I mean, he speaks to us in different ways, but God's voice is very persistent, but it's also like not loud. It's like a gentle voice. It's like a persistent, gentle voice. And um, I just, I didn't know, but like at the same time, like I knew, right? Like I didn't know that that was God's voice, but I knew deep down. His voice is gentle. And it's crazy because when I was doing all that praying, um, I was also reading a book on how to discern God's voice. And I was also just like in my word a lot. Um, not to say that I'm not now still in my word. I mean, I'm still in my word, you know, we all have our days, but I was in my word a lot. And they say that if you really want to hear God's voice, read his word, because like that'll help you identify with his character, just kind of like who he is, the things that he said in the Bible, a lot of that, that's kind of very similar to what he's saying to you. Um, and when you get familiar with that, you can recognize his voice. And it, it's very true. Like the more that you're just in his word and you just kind of meditate on, let it sit in your, rest in your spirit and your heart, you can hear from God. What's crazy is that, you know, in God's eyes, it could have looked like, potentially like disobedience right um I mean he told me a word he he told me something and I did not listen I still went um even though I was still kind of figuring things out and God was still very graceful very gentle with me um and he still gave me his spirit still gave me peace that whole weekend even once the foolishness and craziness began I was not worried at all that whole trip even when we was rationing food even when I was taking my cell phone with me with the flashlight on to go pee even when I was charging my phone in the car you know what I'm saying like even when I was walking in the snow down a mountain to go meet this random man with my friends like it was not um I was still at peace it was not a crazy I mean the situation was crazy but like up here like my mental and my spirit like I was very um calm and I was like it's gonna be fine like and it's just something like I knew in my spirit, like, it'll be fine. Like we're not gonna be in danger. Like I knew that we'd be fine. And that is just the beautiful thing of walking with Jesus and letting his spirit kind of guide you. Because in those situations where like I very much could have been on edge like the whole time. I mean, he was right there with me. And I probably, I mean, his spirit was just kind of like, you're okay. Like it's gonna be fine. And I mean, I'm so thankful that that we serve a God that is gentle and gracious with us and loves us so much that like even despite these crazy situations where we don't listen to his warning, um, that he is like, I still got you. I'm still here with you. I'm still riding with you. Like, you're good, you know? Um, and it's like, what more could I ask for from my father? It's, it's the best, honestly. Thanks guys for having story time with me. I know it's a little long, but it's a crazy story. You can't tell it quick. So thanks for having story time with me today, guys. Now, I hope you can enjoy some clips from that crazy weekend.
Is that right? Get Travis yeah. to do it. Yeah. Are you going to carry it? Yeah, get Travis to do it. Yeah. You won't even carry no bags. You're yeah, through this Thank now. Thank you, guys. Hey guys, thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button, the little notification bell so you can know when I post and like this video. I'll see y'all again soon.